have you ever eaten a really big meal and it thought it was healthy and it was going to be good for you and all this stuff and afterwards you felt not only bloated but also low energy um, had some brain fog maybe even had to run to the bathroom with some diarrhea and you got moody afterwards but you have no idea why, right? Did you know that there's a huge gut-brain connection and everything that we eat can actually affect our moods? Everything you eat has to be digested in your stomach, right? Well, except for corn, because <laughs> that's undigestible. And we all know how that ends up, right? <laughs> According to Johns Hopkins, research has found a connection between the gut and the brain. By studying the brain-gut connection, medical researchers have have actually discovered a fascinating link between the brain and the enteric nervous system, also known as the second brain, located in the gut. Learning more about the complex roles of the enteric nervous system can help doctors understand how the gastrointestinal symptoms have, are affected by the brain and vice versa. This helps provide valuable information on how digestion, mood, and health and thinking patterns are actually interconnected. Doing some more research into this can actually show how much the brain and gut are connected and help improve communications between the brain and that nervous system, and it could lead to more effective treatments of common physical and psychological conditions. So anyway, let's cut out the science talk for a second. I used to suffer from anxiety, depression, and overall mood disorders. Check out this video to hear my full testimony to learn more about that. I started looking into ways to get myself better. I discovered that there was a link between foods and the brain. And one of the biggest things that kept popping up for me was gluten. The more I looked into the symptoms of being gluten intolerant, the more I realized it was definitely what I was dealing with. So what are some of the symptoms of gluten intolerance? Some of these may actually surprise you. Gluten intolerance can cause a variety of symptoms, including abdominal discomfort, um, such as excessive gas, bloating, diarrhea, or constipation. In addition to abdominal discomfort, intestinal cells are also damaged, causing malabsorption of vitamins and minerals. So in other words, you're just, you're getting that um, damage to the intestinal wall and you're not able to absorb vi vitamins and minerals as much as you would be if that gut wasn't being damaged. It can cause dizziness, mental confusion, disorientation, or feeling tired after eating. It can cause some mood changes including irritability, um, anxiety or sadness, chronic migraines, itchy skin and rashes, muscle, joint, and tendon pain. So if you're somebody that's got a lot of the muscle, aches, pains, joints, this is something to look into. Um, chronic fatigue, gastrointestinal problems such as diarrhea, constipation, abdominal swelling, and abdominal pain after eating foods containing gluten, unexplained weight loss due to malabsorption of nutrients, these symptoms can vary wildly from person to person, and not everyone with a gluten intolerance will experience all the same symptoms. And furthermore, we can add even a few more for just overall gut health. If your gut is out of whack, here is a few symptoms you may be experiencing on top of other things already listed. Um, weak immune system, always getting sick sleep problems, yeast infections, fertility issues, sugar and carb cravings. Are you starting to see how important your gut health is and what all it can affect? Let's talk about the difference between gluten intolerance and celiac. So celiac is an autoimmune disorder sparked by hypersensitivity to gluten that causes damage to the small intestine. Celiacs can never eat gluten. It can cause too much damage. This affects about 1% of otherwise healthy Americans. A gluten sensitivity or intolerance, as it's sometimes called, is your body's reaction to gluten that mimics symptoms of celiac disease but does not cause small intestinal damage. It affects 6 to 7% of, of otherwise healthy Americans. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female, both can be affected by this. So how can you know if you have a gluten sensitivity? 
there's a few different ways. You can go to your doctor and get some testing done. Um, oftentimes, the doctors will tell you that um, you, for one, you have to be on gluten eating it in order for the test to come out. But it's only really going to find out if you have celiacs or not. It's not going to be able to really tell you if you're gluten intolerant. Um, so the first step is to go and see if you are celiac because like I was just, just describing, if you have celiac, you cannot eat gluten. Um, it will damage more and more and more the more you eat it and you're just going to have more problems. So um, if you're ce truly, truly celiac, it's really dangerous to even try to go there. Okay. So, so you can go to your doctor and get a celiac test and that's what they'll test you for. If it comes back negative, then they'll most likely just tell you to get off of gluten. At least that was my experience. And just a small disclaimer here. I am not a doctor or medical professional. I'm just sharing with you my experiences, where I've come from and um, where I am now. So, um, when I went, and granted, this was 13, 14 years ago, but um, they did test me. I was not celiac, so I do not have the autoimmune disorder of celiac, but I am gluten intolerant. So, and they said, just get off of it is the main way, way to find out. So basically, you, you have to stop eating it. And once you stop eating it, you will feel, start feeling a difference. All those symptoms I named above, they will start getting better. Um, and if maybe you are experiencing such small differences that you can't quite tell, because sometimes our minds will mess with us a little bit and be like, well, that's not any different. Simply eat it again and you'll know right away if you really have an issue with it. I know like with me, especially with back then, I'm not so bad now, but I know other people. I've just talked to somebody else today who told me that uh, she's also experienced mood issues with gluten. And I know like with me right after I would eat it, I just felt like everything was falling apart. Like I just couldn't think straight. I, I would get really moody. I would be upset one second and cry the next. And my family would be like, did you get gluten? I'm like, yeah, I think I did. <laughs> and it's really kind of hard to explain to people that aren't there or haven't experienced it, but it's such a different feeling in things than just, um, just being like, I know depression is a real thing, so I'm not saying that at all, but it's really eye opening when you can get off certain foods and that depression not be affecting you as much. And you know, this can go along with just not even just gluten, but other food allergies as well, or food sensitivities, not allergies, with other food sensitivities as well. Um, so one of the other things is you can do a uh, food sensitivity test. And there is one that I recommend that I have done called Five Strands. And I will put the link in the comments. And um, that is one where they send you a test and you just take a couple hair follicles you send it back into them and they test it and it comes back with a whole list of what you may or may not be sensitive to and on different levels of how sensitive. And then at that point, you can do an elimination diet where you eliminate everything you're sensitive out of your diet and then you slowly bring things in a little at a time. Um, if this is something anybody wants any help with, let me know. I do do a little bit of one-on-one um, -on -one lifestyle coaching, and this is one of the things I've been working on offering just to help out because I know how daunting it is when you first start all of this and you don't even know, you know, where to go, where to start. You know, it's, it's like there's so much how do I start? Where do I go? Where do I, you know, we can do some pantry makeovers, show you um, exactly what gluten is, where it's at, and all of that. I will do more videos on different gluten-free things. So yeah, and if you are somebody that may have an autoimmune disorder, seeing that if you go into a doctor to get autoimmune tested anymore, a lot of the times they will tell you that if you're eating gluten, to get off of gluten first 
before they test you for an autoimmune disorder because gluten causes so much inflammation in your body if you have a sensitivity to it that it's hard for them to see if something else is going on in there because it's being masked by the gluten. Um, at one point years ago, I got allergy tested for allergies, um, both environmental and food. And I came up with like 12 different food allergies. And what I discovered later is that I wasn't actually sensitive. Well, at that point it was allergies. I wasn't actually allergic to that many different foods, but the gluten was causing so much inflammation in my body that anytime I ate anything, I was reacting to it. Because I, I was to that point where I couldn't eat any food without getting sick. Whether it be um, gastro problems or um, skin problems, headaches, moodiness. Anytime I ate, I was having an issue. And that made eating horrible for me. Um, but yeah, it was that. It was the gluten. And after I got off the gluten and realized what was truly going on, that changed drastically in my life. So now I can eat things, you know. Um, and I'll be real with you. Lately, I've been finding myself that I've cheat a little here and there, <laughs> but I didn't for many, 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 many years. Um, and they do say that if it's a gluten sensitivity, not an allergy and not a celiac thing, that your body can adjust. So if you're off of a food for so long, um, sometimes you can reintroduce it and you may be able to eat that food again later. It all just depends on if your body, your gut has had that time to heal. So every now and then I'll do a little bit of it, but I still don't feel the best. So to me, it's just not worth it. Uh, now there are things you can do if you accidentally ingest it or something. You can um, take something called glutenese, which is an enzyme that can help. Um, I have a video on what I do if I do get glutened. So check that out as well. So if you think that you are dealing um, with a gluten issue, first of all, ask yourself those questions. Do I have any of these symptoms? Um, and then if you do, if you have more than one of them, then you could benefit from cutting out gluten. If you do that and you find that you still have those issues, it could be a different food. So if you didn't want to do some sort of testing, um, you can just eliminate things a little at a time. The biggest culprits are gluten, dairy, corn are some of the big ones. And then you get smaller ones that may not even know, you know. Um, you may have an issue with grapes. You could have an issue with lemons, you know. You can have an issue with anything and not know it. And it could be that one thing that's really affecting you. So... It's just worth it to really pay attention to your body and see what may be affecting it. To me, it's just not worth living with that pain or constant stomach aches or constant moodiness. If it's something as simple as what I'm eating, then I'm going to do what I can to um, cut out whatever needs cut out. And like I said, you could maybe reintroduce it later. You just never know. I just wanted to share some things with you about gluten-free. If you have any particular questions, please cut them, put them in the comments. And I will do some other videos. I could talk forever on this subject. So it's there's going to be different videos along the way about this. But if there's something in particular you want to know, let me know. Um, I will talk to you all later. You have a blessed day. <laughs>